Well, I've realized that I've made a mistake. Uh, I forgot to install the camera and the video transmitter headers onto the RROSD before I soldered it all up. And you know, going back and looking at this a second time, I actually am not convinced I've, I've done this correctly. I put the RROSD on bottom because that's, you know, the PDB goes on the bottom, right? That's just always how you do it. And you want your flight controller on top accessible so you can do any soldering or maintenance or push the bootloader button for gosh sakes. But I'm not convinced that's the right way to do it for this copter. For one thing, we're using the, uh, the flight controller as the PDB, at least in a sense. And because of the way this wire is going and because the ESCs are going to the flight controller, I think it might, it's not like you can take the flight controller and just flip it off. It's, it's secured. So I think the smart way to do it would have been to put the flight controller on bottom, the RROSD on top, and then if you needed to access the flight controller, you could unscrew it and, and sort of fold, of, fold off the RROSD because the only thing going to it would be the battery lead and, and this wire going underneath. Uh, whereas these, these are always going to be secured and you're not really ever going to be able to flip this up or get at it. I don't know. When you're direct soldering, <laughs> it's, oh, it's kind of always a mess. But for now, what am I going to do to get at this to solder on my, my uh, camera and my video transmitter leads? Well... So there's not enough slack for me to get this out of the way, no matter what. So I have to... <laughs> oh yeah, this makes, this makes a lot of sense. And there we go, there we go. Now, I'm just going to get myself in the same trouble the next time I, I go to work on the flight controller. It's just pushing off one kind of trouble for another. So the, the power, the... Um, the OSD is going to go on bottom, and I almost never have to mess with it, so it'll probably be fine. If I were not a masochist, I would put some pins on here, and I would uh, I would use this nice little servo header. But I am a masochist, and so I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to direct solder it. Because I'm a freaking masochist. And I, I just uh, can't resist making trouble for myself. can't see what I'm doing here because I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot. <laughs> mm. VTX is a, a TBS Unify, which is a, a real beauty. And it comes with this header. And I'm guessing... Let's see. Let's get this oddball thing, this unusual thing here for the camera. And then, how cute. <laughs> you can use a, a JST connector if you prefer. And then we got a whole bunch of wires here going into the video transmitter. I see. It's got a 5 volt output for your camera. Yeah, it's. It's got a 5-volt output for the camera, video and audio, which we're not going to use. And then it can take VBAT directly, and I bet it can. I think I'm going to give this guy VBAT, um, so I'll need to modify the, uh, the solder bridge on the ROSD. The solder bridge in question is this one. It's labeled VTX, and it says 12 volts or RAW. We're going to change that to RAW. So the first thing to do is to sort of swipe away the 12 volt bridge like so now we're going to try to bridge the raw to the center now that'll do that's a way bigger blob than is really needed but It'll do. And you got to make absolutely sure when you're doing one of these solder bridges that you're not bridging all three of them, or typically you will um, you'll fry something. 
So we've got VBAT coming in, then we've got two ground wires. One is coming in from the battery and one is going out to the camera. They're assuming with this Unify that you're going to run the camera off the Unify, which I'm not doing. I'm going to run the camera off the ROSD. Um, so, yeah, because you, you couldn't do that if you're using a, uh, well, you, you could do it with an OSD, but I'm not going to. Then yellow is the video, so, I'm, and I'm not working, I'm not running audio. So, I'm going to remove the wires I'm not using. There we go. And I'll do the old strip and solder, just like you saw me do on the other one. Okay, so I've got the camera wired up here, the camera header here, and I've got the video transmitter header wired up here, and I've got the video transmitter wired via the solder bridge to take raw battery input because the video transmitter can handle up to like 24 volts or something. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my heat gun and give this a twist and just use my heat gun. to encourage it to take the twist and keep the twist, just to keep things neat. If I were really being anal retentive, I would have cut, I would have figured out the length on these and cut them to length. But what I prefer to do is just leave them a little bit long and then I'll twist them like so and it'll sort of take up the slack and then it, it, that's how I'll do it. And through the magic of video editing, the ESCs are all soldered up, the motors are, are ready to go, everything is taped up and covered and beautiful and wonderful. And this is the point where I could uh, start putting the camera and the video transmitter and the receiver on and the top of the frame. I'm very close to being done here. But before I do all that, why not take this over to the computer, plug a battery in, plug my smoke stopper in, always use a smoke stopper when you're working on the bench, and just make sure that all the motors spin normally. If I've screwed up one of the ESCs somehow, better to discover it now and not have to take the entire freaking copter apart after I've finished putting it all together. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll see you back here after I do that. And we're back. Uh, everything went fine with the ESCs and the motors while I was there. I got my ESCs upgraded to the latest version of BL Heli. I set the motor direction. I reversed two of the ESCs so they were spinning the right direction. I calibrated the ESCs, all that good stuff. Uh, and I, I, I haven't yet finished setting up Betaflight, but the ESCs are at least and the motors are good to go. So now we're going to finish up the build. The next piece of the build we're going to get into is this upper part. Now we've got something very interesting going on here. Uh, when I looked around at the parts I'd been sent, I said to myself, where are the standoffs? Well, there are no standoffs in this copter. It, the whole thing is held together with captive nuts that go in here and screws that come in from the outside. And you've probably seen this before on a build like, uh, per, for example, the Mixuko or the QQ190, where this same uh, sort of structure is used to hold the camera pod on. But I don't think I've seen one yet that use the same thing just throughout, even for the top plate, even if you look at something like the Arma 10 Armadillo, which has a, a kind of a similar structure in the way that the frame is with side walls and stuff, it's still using standoffs to cross uh, here. So this is very interesting. Um, the, the, the piece fits in very snugly. I'm very impressed with the machining on this frame. But sometimes the machining is not consistent. You'll get some that are tight and some that are a little loose. This one is just about perfect. I had to push just a little to get these to go in, but then they slip in and it's completely snug and tight. Really impressed. If they're all the same uh, tolerances and the same tightness, I'm really impressed overall with the, uh, the machining here. We've got the camera here, and before I install the camera, I should go ahead and set it up. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lens out and I'm going to replace it with the very nice uh, GoPro style lens that they sent. Okay, the uh, 2.8 millimeter lens has been removed and the GoPro style lens has been installed. Uh, fantastic, it just, just screws out and screws back in again until it's focused. Uh, the other thing I do on these cameras is I enable digital wide dynamic range. Uh, there are other settings you can do depending on what camera you've got to try and make the picture as good as possible. Um, I'm not going to go into deep into the camera settings for this exact camera. Uh, I find that enabling digital wide dynamic range makes the biggest difference. Everything else is sort of shades of gray. Just put that anywhere. So I've screwed up. I've screwed up this. 
There's nowhere the ESC there's nowhere for the ESC wires to pass through. They have to come out the sides. They have to come out the side here and then they'll fit they'll come out here and they'll go to the ESC. And the wires that are included are exactly long enough if the flight controller is on the bottom. And if you soldered it with them coming out the bottom like you're supposed to, you have absolutely no tolerance to do it any other way. You can't have them come out the top, number one, because they're not long enough, and number two, because there's not enough clearance here for them to come out the top. They have to come out the bottom. Well, folks, uh, we're going to come to a premature end of this build, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have done my best to figure out some alternative that I can live with to actually routing the wires the way they're supposed to be routed, and I've failed. Um, I can almost convince myself that this one is okay. They're passing through this slot loosely, not under too much stress. But this one here, they're really getting pinched by the board. I thought about, could I take this standoff out and lower the whole stack down by a couple of millimeters, give myself a little more clearance up here. And I can't convince myself that that's worth doing because these two wires right here would be really close to this plate and at risk of shorting. So that's no good. And the final straw was that I was trying to freaking get this, I don't know, trying to make this situation better. And you can see right there, while I was fiddling with the wire, I tore the insulation, and that's a no-go. <laughs> that's just a no-go. You can't have a you can't have broken insulation on your ESC wire. So I can't finish this build until I get some more wire to replace that with. At which point I may as well just run the wire correctly to begin with. You know, what, like if it fit if the built, how hard is it, right? This part goes here. Okay, fine. The side plate goes on. The screws go up through the bottom, side plate, top plate, top plate goes in like this, the camera goes there, and the antenna goes on top, and then you just take some, take some tape, <laughs> like that, <laughs> take some tape, and camera's gonna, camera's gonna go about here. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> the camera goes there. Then <laughs> you need an antenna. An antenna. <laughs> there you go. Good. Good. <laughs> Put two antennas on there for good measure. <laughs> uh, and the video transmitter. Where's the, I can't find the video transmitter. Oh, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> and done. <laughs> Build complete. <laughs> I apologize to all Carbon RC for, for screwing up this build. <laughs> That's all. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let me <be> fly. <laughs> Whee!